Hello everyone, and welcome back to Fate Stay Night. Previously, Shiro and Saber returned home, only to find Rin lying in a bloody mess. She passed on a dagger, inscribed with the name of Azoth, to Shiro, which is some sort of like magical focus for spellcasting, and she said that Ilya had been kidnapped. And, um, Rin fell unconscious, and it's unclear as to whether she'll live or die through her wounds, but from there we had multiple choices on how they should spend the rest of the night, and I ended up sticking with Saber retrieving her sheath from inside Shiro's body. This has made Saber quite a bit more powerful, but Shiro cannot magically regenerate anymore, and any injuries he suffers will stick. And now, they're at the threshold of Ryudo Temple for the final fight. The fate route is drawing to a close. So without further ado, let's hop in here and see what happens. And so, we reach the mountain gate. This is the final choice. If we go on, it will end. But if we go back, I might be able to find a way to avoid losing her. Saber. I stop and turn back to Saber. Saber is the same as always. A tense stare with a composed expression. The moment I see it, all kinds of temptation attack me. Like, let's run away. Like, if I don't want to lose her, I can go back. She would accompany me if I wished. My determination wavers. That temptation rises in my throat. But I stop it. Let's go. This will be our last battle. I declare that as a master, just as I always have. Saber nods silently. Her eyes are strong-willed, as always. So I won't have any regrets. As she believes in me, I too will believe that my choice is correct. We start for the mountain gate. We head into the battle with no return. I couldn't say anything, and I couldn't tell her what I really wanted to tell her. But I want to believe that this silence was able to tell her my feelings. The lawn stairs we climb together. This is our final memory of our time together. Red light fills the mountaintop. Gee, I wonder if the Holy Grail is evil. <laughs> The blowing wind is getting stronger, and it seems the source of it is that light, coming from the back of the grounds. The red phosphorescence scatters on the wind, and the ground is too bright for nighttime. Stagnant air filled with the presence of death. This is... just like the fire back then. But it isn't like that. With all, within all this red light, something is about to emerge. From the back of the building, a black darkness oozing in the bright red. If this clearing is like a clear lake, that mud is like an oil spill. Mud that spreads, taints the ground, and does not kill anything it swallows. It's like a visible curse. I'm Omegas too. I can sense that the thing only reacts to the human mind and only swallows human bodies. You are finally here. I've been waiting for you, Saber. He is there, within all the rich colors. Ignoring the blood red and the death-stained black, the servant clad in gold is waiting for us. No, for Saber in the middle of this place. And the time is about right. 
The Holy Grail has finally moved into action, and the void has just opened. This curse is the contents of the Holy Grail, the third element which keeps us servants in this world. Us servants in this world. This is what you splashed me with ten years ago. Gilgamesh is only looking at Saber. It goes the same for Saber. She takes a step forward and points her sword at the knight in front of her. Gilgamesh, what do you intend? What do you wish for with that curse? That thing falsely presented as a holy grail? I have told you that I have no wish. I do not care how Kudamine will use the holy grail. For now, my only concern is you. As if an answer to Saber, the Golden Knight raises his hand. At the same time, the air behind him sways like a haze. The King's treasure, hundreds of noble phantasms, are loaded like bullets. Yes, the time has finally come. I have been looking forward to this all this time, Saber. How to pin you down and make you swallow the... Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. What, what, did, what are you talking about, buddy? Uh, um... Uh, oh. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, jeez, oh, oof. But, um... <clears throat> what a creep. I hate this guy. Uh, I guess he really did kill Lancer then, huh? Um... <clears throat> Well said. Then you shall have no objections to yourself meeting the exact same fate. <laughs> Another step. Saber steps into range of the many noble phantasms. This isn't a battle I can do anything about. The battle between Saber and Gilgamesh is something no human can interfere with. <laughs> that is what I expect of you, Saber. That strong spirit, even though you know you cannot defeat me. It is indeed suitable to end this party, but... I do not want any intrusions. You, mongrel, disappear right now if you want to see Kodamine. He is waiting for you at the altar. Kodamine is waiting. I glance at Saber. She nods while looking at Gilgamesh. Her figure tells me that she is wishing me her best. I turn around. The one I need to face isn't, the, isn't here. Behind me, as I run, I hear the battle start. At the back of the building, behind the main temple, is a large lake. Untouched by humans, the lake is holy as if a dragon king lives in it. Isn't this the lake that Castor teleported Shiro to during the assassin fight? I think it is. The clear blue water is pure, and the lake isn't even murky. But that's all in the past. The lake now has none of these characteristics. The red light is in front of my eyes, and the sea of black tar, and... America, is that you? Uh... Huh. Uh, anyway, um... The void created in the air, and the girl presented as a sacrifice. Kodomine! My calm mind instantly goes over the limit. I stop and glare at my enemy. Welcome, Mimishro. The last surviving master. He smiles sarcastically and opens his arms to welcome me. This is the site of our battle. This is the altar of the summoning in this Holy Grail War.
Let Ilya down. I'll beat you up after that. Um. So I was initially planning to just use a few black bars to censor this, but uh. No, I think I'm just censoring this entire scene. Because. Okay, okay, look. I know Ilya is like. as a featureless body, body like a Barbie doll, but. I'm, all, I'm I'm just gonna not take any risks. Uh, okay, so let me describe the scene. Ilya is suspended like 10, 20 feet up in the air at the bottom of a black hole that is spewing forth black liquid. And her arms are raised up looking like she's crucified. Okay. Uh, and also she's not wearing any clothes, so yeah. Let Ilya down. I'll beat you up after that. I glare at Kodamine. There's about 10 meters between us. The fight will begin if I move another step. I don't know what kind of Megas Kodamine is, but I assume he'll use some kind of projectile weapon like Tosaka. In comparison, I can only punch him. Even though I have the dagger Tosaka gave me, it's useless unless I get near him. Once the fight starts, I'll have to run straight at him and stab his chest. But first, I have to do something about Ilya. Hey, didn't you hear me? I told you to let Ilya down. What's so fun about torturing a kid? I understand your feelings, but I cannot do that. The Holy Grail has appeared, but the Void is yet unstable. My wish will not come true unless she bears this until she dies. Until she dies? Then Ilya is still alive! I see. If you have no intention of letting her down, I'll just have to use force. I'll stop your wish. That black mud, right now. Oh, so this must appear to be my wish to you, as expected from the son of Kuritsugu. I did not expect two generations to make me the same mistake. To make the same mistake. B what? This mud is not of my making. This is the power leaking out of the Holy Grail, the colorless power that should have been omnipotent. No human power is able to stain it black. This holy grail has been like this from the beginning. Once opened, it will flow out without end and cause a disaster. This is the true identity of the holy grail. This thing is filled with every evil, something that curses everything in this world. No one can control such a thing. What is he saying? If that's true, then he became a master not for a wish, but just to open this up? Kodomine, what's your wish? I clench my teeth and glare at the black priest. The man smiles. Well, let's see. If anything, it is for entertainment. He makes a simple claim, as if it's only natural. What? Do you not understand? Music, for example. Why do people find music fun, Imiyashiro? Uh, well... How about a book? Why do you think stories attract people? Why? I've never thought about it. Yes, you do not even need to think about it. Every entertainment exists to pleasure people. It is amusing because it was made by people. All creation comes from within people. In short, the most entertaining things in the world are humans themselves. Bare humans are the best entertainment in the world. 
compared to that, entertainment created by people is just secondary. Yes, music, stories, like, dislike, pity, belief, betrayal, morals, corruption, illusion, truth. It is all just trash to be discarded. Such things are mere second-rate trashy entertainment. What I like to enjoy are people themselves. Such pointless things are not my taste. For that, we need to discard excess things such as their lives. You heard of flashbacks, right? It is like that. People have value only at the moment of their deaths. Using their lifetime to gain momentum, they jump high to dazzle. That flicker is my wish. You know, I kind of respect the sheer brazenness of Kire just... His motivation is just that he really likes watching people die. Like, that's it. It's kind of refreshing, actually. You have so many villains these days who have uh, noble aspirations, who are maybe are doing things for the greater good at heavy, heavy costs. No, Kirei's just being a dick. That's it, that, that's all he is. I'm fine with that. That is the answer to your question. As you feed on peacefulness, I live by feeding on this planet's light. The priest offering a speech with his hands apart is abnormal. I feel a chill, but not at his speech. But at the priest himself, because he looks like a holy being while he says he wants to enjoy humans. So, you... Yes. The fire ten years ago wasn't too bad. It was on a small scale, but it was filled with unusual excitement. These are the only things I wish for. Such a hell contains an explosion of souls, the best flicker a man can give. You must have experienced that as well, Amiya Shiro. See, people dying in regret must have touched your heart, did it not? You... Don't... Talk shit. That time... That hell can't be contained with just that one sentence. Do you understand now? It is in a distorted fashion, but no one loves humans as much as I. Therefore, no one is more appropriate than myself to receive the Holy Grail. The priest laughs in satisfaction, as if... as if he thinks that event where people died in vain is wonderful from the bottom of his heart. Oh, I see. Oh, that's probably Shiro. Oh, I see. I concentrate on my feet. I put my powers into my legs, about to jump forward. So, I can kill you! I jump forward with all my might. It's about ten meters to him. I'm going straight at him and... I jump sideways. This is the result of my instincts of not wanting to die. Surpassing my desire to kill him. I roll sideways onto the ground and look up. That's... I look at the place I was running over. A sound of burning. The burning sound is coming from the black mud stretching out from the lake. It's like a black carpet. The mud slashed like a whip, attacking me as I went after Kodamine and left a mark on the ground. I forgot to tell you, but you are already within my range. And to add, this thing is sensitive to living beings. I do not mind you moving. But you will die if you move carelessly. Tentacle powers, of course. 
I jumped to avoid the black mud mercilessly attacking me. Screw moving carelessly, he's ready to kill me. Damn. You fake priest. I stand up, still keeping watch over the lake. The distance to Kudamine hasn't changed. That means this 10 meters is as near as he wants me to get. But that tentacle of mud stretches without limit. It will come after me if he wants it to, and I'm sure there are more than one. Oh, so you are ready to fight. That pleases me. I could not kill you if you were to run away, but there will be no problem if you attack me. I serve God, so I cannot kill someone who is pleading for their life. <laughs> Don't lie. You can't say that after attacking someone from behind. You must have remembered what happened with Lancer. Kodamine laughs as if in adm admiration. Oh yes, I hated you for that. There is no need to put this off any longer. To be honest, I had hopes for you, Miyashiro. I felt some sort of fate when Rin came to the church with you. You cannot know how happy I was when I found out that you were Kuritsuku's son, and that you were like him on the inside as well. I never really thought about that. Oh. The wish that you did not come true ten years ago. The wish that did not come true ten years ago. I never expected that I would be able to get my revenge on Amiya Kuritsugu. The tentacle whips out. The quivering mud coming from the lake is like a black snake. I bite my lip. This is the worst situation as I thought. The number of snakes continues to increase without end. I don't know how Lana can survive, let alone how I can get close to him. It is only natural of you to be unable to win. There is a large difference in the years we have lived. It is a difference you cannot overcome unless you have something major. The priest raises his hands. He glares at the heavens as if he is conducting an orchestra. Put your life on the line. You might be able to reach me if you do so. He releases the black snakes. Whoa! Look at that! That is a very large amount of blades, almost approaching the amount of infinite. Whatever works. <clears throat> oh, that was awful. Sparks fly off. The Golden Knight retreats from the blows which are full of the utmost spirit. She must have seen it as an opening. Saber dodges the swinging sword and moves deeper into the enemy's range. If the yell is a rip, the sword is like a comet. It overwhelms the opponent and he hesitates, but she keeps attacking. The sword keeps moving. It has destroyed rocks and pierced through walls, but... Ah. Every blow is blocked by weapons appearing from behind him. You persistent? Escaping danger, the Golden Knight, Gilgamesh, has another sword in, hand, in its hand. It is easy to repel that weapon, but she cannot block it straight on. All of the enemy's weapons have unknown abilities. It would be suicidal to block it without knowing its ability. Saber jumps back out of range and catches her breath. Gilgamesh raises himself unhurriedly. You do not give up, woman. Can you not tell it is futile? Gilgamesh shows no fatigue. For him, 
this battle is just entertainment. There must be no fatigue or strain when he knows he is going to win. But it's different for Saber. For her, this moment is her only chance of victory. Before her enemy becomes serious. She has to defeat Gilgamesh before he takes out Ea, or she will be the one who is defeated. That is why she has continued to attack without a thought for saving her energy. She has cornered the enemy like this more than a few times. But still, she could never get past his wall of noble phantasms. Are you still going to continue? It is good to be loyal to your master, but there should be a limit. That mongrel would have been killed by Kuramine by now. There should be no reason for you to fight now. My master is still very much alive. Shura will not be defeated by that master. It can only be a matter of time. You do not know the Holy Grail. Even I have trouble against it. That kid will not last even a minute. You cannot beat me. And that kid cannot beat Kodamine. You have mistaken your roles. If you had gone after the Holy Grail, this battle would have been yours. The Golden Knight's eyes are not laughing. He is serious. But that is wrong. For Saber, such a choice would be a mistake. Nonsense. This is the correct decision. I will not lose to you, and Shira will not lose to a corpse such as that. You have fallen low to hope for a result that has yet to happen. Oh, it seems you still have energy to talk impudently. Space distorts. The number of noble phantasms behind Gilgamesh increases. It is coming. She grips her holy sword once again. Actually, there is a way. There is only one, but there is a way to defeat that Golden Knight. But for that... It will not succeed unless several conditions are met. Even if she defeats Ia, he will be able to defend against her attack if he has energy left. And the method to defeat Ia will remain unknown until she takes a direct hit from it once more. Take a hit from Ia? No way. Even with the sheath, I would not be able to get up after being hit. But there is no other way to win. It is a matter of how to grasp that slight chance. Usually, she selects the best choice by instinct and follows that view. But right now, she cannot even feel it with her instincts. Probably because the probability of victory is so low, and the chance of a comeback is pretty much zero. But still, she must fight. For Shiro, who abandoned his protection to give her back her sheath, she cannot be defeated here by him. I see. It seems you will not be convinced without a complete loss. More weapons appear. They move without Gilgamesh touching them, and they aim at Saber. The weapons, whose handles were only visible before, all show blades now and await their master's order. This is the knight's way of fighting. From the beginning, Gilgamesh has never been a swordsman. These noble phantasms are produced in the air and become bullets at their master's command. That is why he is called Archer. This servant is an archer with the strongest arrows. Do your best to avoid them. If you do well, you shall only be stabbed in the limbs. With one command, the Godspeed, the Godspeed reign of swords begins. Each one has fatal power.
she eludes every one of them like a falling leaf. A sword from the front, a spear from the left, a polearm from below and above, a three-edged sword arcing and attacking from behind. Three-edged? How? Yeah, never mind. A swing from a hammer bigger than she is. She blocks, repels, dodges, and twists her body away from the last attack. Breathing hard, Saber recovers the stance she was driven out of. In that instant, she sees them behind her enemy. Behind Gilgamesh. The noble phantasms are already produced. 47 of them. She jumps full force. Many noble phantasms stab into the ground as not to let her escape. In the rain of noble phantasms, she is hit time after time. Her armor is destroyed, her gauntlets pierced, and even the pieces covering her feet are pierced. Saber manages to avoid a fatal wound even in this danger, then sees the worst thing possible. On the other side of the reign of noble phantasms, as if to finish off a fleeing enemy, Gilgamesh is pulling out his favorite sword. Yeah. She stops her jump. She lands right away and pours magical energy into her holy sword. But will it be in time? Wind roars. The blade of light is revealed as she raises her sword without waiting for the wind to fully unseal. Say it with me. X. She does not even bother with the reign of noble phantasms and swings her holy sword with all the speed possible. Hanuma Ilish. But it is too late. Pounding through his own noble phantasms, Gilgamesh swings his sword. Ah, oh, what a cliffhanger. Ugh. I kick away the mucus around my ankle. My clothes are burnt away and my skin is exposed. I jump back from the striking tentacle. I can't feel my right ankle, and I can't even tell if it's there, but I jump into the open field in front of me. I check my body as I roll. Ankle. Alright, it's still there. I just can't feel it. If it's there, I should be able to run. I jump in a different direction again to avoid the striking mud. I hear a splashing sound right next to me. The smell of the ground burning forces my dizzy head awake and... Fire runs up my back. I shake it off and jump to an empty space. That must have been the end of this attack. The black mud that was surrounding me has disappeared from view for now. I bite my lip. I ran so much but in the end... I push back to here again. I breathe hard and look at him so as not to lose in spirit. Kodamine has not moved at all. He has just watched me run around. No matter how hard I breathe, my heart won't calm down. It's saying it's at its limits and it needs rest. It's about to go out on its own if I don't let it rest. I can't do anything. I can't get near Kodamine, nor can I get through that black mud. 
I'm not going to hold back on using the projection magic. If I can't move forward, I can reproduce Saber's sword again. It'll surely be able to slice through that black mud and I can go straight for Kotomine. Hmm? Is that all? Tell me if you have given up. The instant he speaks... Lots of mud comes splashing towards me, telling me I cannot let myself stop. I raise myself and barely dodge the mud. The mud itself isn't too bad. It's slow compared to Saber's Shinai, and it only comes where it's aimed, so it's easy to dodge. But that's only true when there's only one of them. I can't deal with tens of mud attacks, the ones that come from behind me the instant I dodge them. As a result, I can only move around. Even then, mud covers me bit by bit. There's no time to rest. I can't reproduce a sword like this. Projection magic tracing a weapon from the beginning requires at least one minute of concentration. If I show such an opening, I'll be melted down to my bones. The parts of my body covered with mud have lost sensation. The only good thing is that I don't feel any pain, but I won't know if I'm dead or not when that mud covers my whole body. I'm finished when that happens, and most of all, I'll have melted away by then. All I can do is run. I know it's only a matter of time, even if I do, but I have to keep running for now. I won't have any luck getting near Kotomine while I'm dodging this mud. I can't get close now. Waiting behind Kotomine is a pool of mud. If there's any chance of getting near him, it'll be when I do something about this mud. Ow! Damn. Uh-oh. Uh, I can't believe it. Who on earth would trip at a time like this? Kotomine looks down at me like trash. He points his finger at me and many snakes show their veins. I get up. I try to get up, but fall again. Uh, I fall. I fall. The snakes are coming. But I still fall. Why? 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 Black mud comes from my neck. Why? Oh, I see why. My right ankle is unbelievably black. This is probably Gilgamesh. So, that is it. I hoped I would be able to have a little more fun. But you are Kuritsugu's son, after all. You people... Oh. That's... That's Kirei. I hoped I would be able to have a little fun. But you are Kuritsugu's son, after all. You people are useless. What? I raise my head. I'm... Still conscious. My wrists and neck are held by mud like chains. But I still retain my senses. Why don't you finish me off? I will, soon enough. But just doing that would not be all that fun. You are Kuritsugu's fake, so the debt Kuritsugu owes me from ten years ago shall be returned with your death. The skin with mud on it is burning. It feels like acid is slowly seeping through the pores of my skin. I grit my teeth, bare it, and check on my right ankle. It's totally black. I can't feel it, nor can I move it at all. I'll have to take the mud out of my body or put magical energy into it to move the clotted blood in there. Either way, 
The moment I move it, all the muscle in my right ankle will be destroyed. I see. I don't care about that, but... Oh, that's, that's sure. I see. I don't care about that, but... Why do you hate Kuritsugu so much? Was it so annoying to, to you that Kuritsugu destroyed the Holy Grail? It is just hatred for a similar person. Kuritsugu and I were alike, so everything he did got on my nerves. It is the same as the way you feel hatred toward me. What? Uh, shut up! Don't you dare say that Kuritsugu is like you! I raise my body up with my arms and glare at him. I don't know what's so funny, but he makes that evil smile. I see. It must be so. F it must be so for you. After all, he was a good enough person to let me go. He defeated me, the cause of that disaster, but he did not take my life. You should know that was a mistake. If he had killed me, those orphans would have been able to lead a peaceful life. You... You should not be able to retort, but it was unpleasant for me as well. The fact that such a cold-hearted Magus left me alive, it was unpleasant. That again. Saber said it too that Kuritsuku was a great Magus, and that he would do anything to accomplish his goals. But that's... But that was not his mistake. The mistake he made is that he thought this war had ended with the destruction of the Holy Grail. That is why he did not tell you anything, optimistically thinking that the Holy Grail war was over, and died stained in this curse. He was certainly a fool. He let the one who cursed him go, and as a result, died within a few years. Oh my god. Kirei was behind Kuritsugu dying young. Oh my god. <laughs> Believing that he had accomplished his goal and the Holy Grail War had ended. Hold on. Then... What? Kuritsugu died because of this guy? And that peaceful face he had on the night of his death was... Oh, let me ask you one last question. What was Kuritsugu's last moment like? Did he give you something to you as his son and pass away with satisfaction? Huh, how foolish can he be? He accomplished nothing and pushed the responsibility onto you. His passing must have been ridiculous. You! I kick off the ground. I drove magical energy into my right foot and moved it by force. I ignore my tearing muscles and run to him on all fours like a dog. Yes. I would expect at least that much spirit. Kodamene raises his hand toward the waterfall behind him. What is he thinking? That is a curse so strong that it's visible. You could call it magical energy specialized for destroying people. There is nothing you can do with it as, as it cannot be reshaped or anything. Anybody that touches that mud will be stained with a strong curse and will be melted as if digested. In the process, the pain and fear before death remain as magical energy and become the next curse to seek out living people. So, you die if you touch it. Anyone who touches it will die unless they can get the mud out of their body. The priest stuck his hand in that waterfall of mud, but he doesn't stop smiling. So, Gilgamesh got dunked with the Holy Grail, didn't he, at the end of the last war? How did he survive ten years then? Maybe a heroic spirit can just eat the magical energy of the curse. 
I don't know. This is your reward. Die in the same manner as Kuritsugu. In his hand is a black darkness. I sense it is something completely different and... The world is attacked by a sudden flash of light. The moment I realize that the light is from Saber's noble phantasm... Ingra... Ingra Mainyu? Ingra Mainyu. That... Okay, this might sound really stupid, but... Ingra Mainyu is the name of the very first boss of the World of Darkness Alliance Raid in Final Fantasy XIV. I nickname it Angry Mango. Um... I so... Uh... Angry Mango... The priest's words instantly turn the world black. Her vision blinded by the light is filled with darkness. If she were conscious, she would have known it was the ultimate black light. The darkness was only for an instant. But it is not darkness, but a swarm of grain-sized curses. The darkness swept her body away and she regained consciousness from the unpleasant sensation. Oh! She gasps. The first thing she feels after consciousness returns is pain. Skin that was protected by armor is burned. Her body is pierced and slashed, and she is in a miserable state. I... see... I... Lost to Ia. She was cornered by Gilgamesh's noble phantasms, could not block them, and took a hit from Ia as well. She managed to offset it a bit with Excalibur, but her body is wounded too badly. The wound is healing without magical energy, but even the protection of the sheath will not return her to normal instantly. There. This is it, Saber. Do not tell me you refuse to admit your defeat in that state. Gilgamesh approaches without a scratch. Still on the ground, Saber looks up at her enemy. She cannot do anything right now. The man can do whatever he wants with her. Gilgamesh, that light was... In spite of that, this is what she worries about. That flash of light. That black darkness from the back of the compound that covered the earth for an instant. She does not want to think about it. But that darkness might have been aimed at Shiro. That light? You should be able to tell. It is a great curse. Kodomine must have summoned it straight from the Holy Grail. I hear that the Holy Grail holds something that could curse everything in this world. The pollution you've seen up to now is just the remains of what came out of the Holy Grail. The primary curse has been summoned. Your master should no longer be alive. No, that cannot be. She concentrates all her power. She knows her body will not move. But she cannot abide just lying on the ground. No, Shiro is alive. He is still... Certainly... She still feels the connection with her master. It is weak and ready to go out, but Emiya Shiro is still alive. So, she must go. If the enemy is something so unforeseeable, Shiro cannot match it. Using the warmth inside her, she, she tries to get up. But it was useless. Even the sheath of the Holy Sword will require a few more minutes to heal her body. 
It is too late. Stay still, Saber. The Holy Grail will overflow whatever you do. The events of ten years ago will reoccur. But this ritual is for your benefit, not mine. Looking up at the red burning sky, the Golden Knight smiles. Rejoice, Saber. If you are showered with it, you'll become like me. You will have a body in this world and be able to enjoy your second life. Though I am not sure you'll be able to keep your sanity as I did. What? Saber looks up at her enemy in amazement. Saber can tell that thing is a great curse. It is a magnificent cluster of magical energy and any magic should be possible with that amount. If it were Caster using it, nothing would be impossible. But it is a double-edged sword. That thing can only curse people. If immersed in such a thing, even a heroic spirit would be unable to keep themselves together. That makes her realize. The servant in front of her, this knight called the oldest king of heroes, he was swallowed by that pollution ten years ago. So... Gilgamesh, you... He has gone insane already. Oh, you think so? Laughing, Gilgamesh looks down at Saber. His face looks crazy, and it suits him. Do not take me so lowly. How can I be a hero if I cannot swallow a curse such as this? All evils of the world. <laughs> Bring me at least three times as much as that if you want to stain me. See, Saber, a hero is someone who carries with them everything they see. I am already carrying everything in this world. Saber gasps quietly at his words. She will never be able to come to terms with this heroic spirit. His arrogant thinking, his selfishness to consider himself the greatest, and his merciless nature that never thinks of others. This is different from the path of the king she chose, a set of beliefs that will never overlap with hers. But this man still is a king. She can say that with confidence. Of all the servants, this man is the only one who would be capable of keeping his sanity after being soaked in that vast curse. <laughs> yes, making you swallow the mud is good, but it is no fun if you go qu crazy because of that. Well, let us hold our marriage now. Man, Gilgamesh is tall! Holy shit! That's really tall. Gilgamesh, you... What, do you dislike being treated roughly? Then get used to it. I do not hold myself back on women or food. I plunder and eat them at my leisure. I don't like where this is going. Held upside down, Saber glares at Gilgamesh. So you honor your master as a servant, I see. Ridiculous. I cannot believe you gave him your body just because of the binds of the command spell. How, 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 can, he, how, can, how can he tell? Wait. Uh, oh. I, I don't want to think. You are wrong. Do not misunderstand, Gilgamesh. I do not obey anyone. My body has never had such freedom. Oh, then you will not be mine no matter what? His red eyes pierce Saber. There's no human emotion. He will kill if she disobeys. He will just kill her no matter how attached he was to her. These are his true feelings. Gilgamesh's truth. Saber stares back at Gilgamesh, not averting her gaze. Gilgamesh, 
I will not become anyone's. I already belong to my country. My body is a king before I am a woman. She does not say it to anyone. She just says so, feeling the small warmth still within her body. <laughs> so that is your answer? Do not make me laugh, Saber. A country is just a possession. If he cannot rule everything, there is no need for a transcendental being like the king. Jeez, King Arthur, that is why your own country destroyed you. The Golden Knight sneers at her immaturity. That brings back her determination. Yes, you are correct. But, King of Heroes, that is why you destroyed your own country. A roared yell full of spirit. Saber uses her whole body to kick Gilgamesh in the face with her free leg. Wah! Gilgamesh lets go. S a saber stays upside down and jumps using her arms. You would stomp on a man? You must really want to be disciplined, Saber. She closes her eyes and looks within herself. That is why you were destroyed by your own country. She already knew that. She has heard those words over and over since she was summoned as Saber. But that man is different. He was mad like it was his own affair, but still, he thought that it was something to be proud of. So there is only one thing that must be done. Even if there is not the slightest chance of winning, she cannot stop here. While the warmth is still in her heart, she must run to her master as fast as possible. About eight meters to Gilgamesh, she places herself at the best range she found earlier. Her body will not move as she wishes. Her legs do not have even a tenth of their original power, and the arms holding her sword are weak. She will fall without being able to block no matter what kind of a weak attack she receives. But there are no openings in Saber's stance, nor is there any hesitation. Let me ask you... Gilgamesh has to prepare himself seeing her like that. The Golden Knight readies Ia and looks at his opponent. Are you sane? Saber does not answer. Her eyes show her determination. Alright, I will not hold back in that case. The air roars. The Sword of Separation, Ia. A sword said in ancient Mesopotamia to have divided and created the world. Gilgamesh's Sword of Separation roars to exterminate its enemy for sure this time. The swirl of air and the magical energy within it far exceed Excalibur. Disappear! You are annoying, woman. Ia is raised. Saber raises her sword to match it. Their gazes meet only for an instant. Enuma Ilish! Gilgamesh's sword is swung. But Saber's sword falls without power as she is unable to activate the Noble Phantasm. The light that cuts everything charges. Unable to do anything, she is swallowed by the light. The instant I am swallowed by the darkness, hell is printed into my brain. 
Oh. Oh man, I'm gonna have a lot of editing to do in this video. Oh jeez. Um. Uh. Things are not looking good for for our heroes. Uh. Um. Hmm. Eh. Tell you what, if it was true that seven servants had died and it was, um, no, six servants had died and it was just Saber and Gilgamesh, wouldn't the Holy Grail be completed? Like, Ilya still has to, like, become it, right? Like, it... Like, clearly the magical font is opened, but Kire said something about Ilya still needing time. What if Rin's archer is still alive? Like, what, what, what if, though? What, what, what if he comes back and kicks some butt? He's cool enough to do that. Maybe, maybe he could save them, uh, um... Yeah, no, things aren't looking good for our heroes. I don't know how they're going to get out of this. This is going to be interesting, but, um... <laughs> oh, man. I expect this huge battle might wrap up by the next video? I don't know... And after that, there might be some epilogue that shows what happens next, like the aftermath with the dust settling. Um, might be just two more videos now, then. Uh, yeah, well, I... Oh. Yeah, so I guess Gilgamesh really is insane. Um... I remember him being this egotistical in Fate Zero, for sure, but, uh... Maybe he did lose his sanity. Maybe just a smidge. Um... I don't know what's gonna happen next time, I'm looking forward to finding out what, so... I'm Zephyr the Jester, this has been more Fate Stay Night, Thank you for watching. Hopefully, you'll join me next time. So until then, please take care.